guys. For this week's video, I'm gonna try to be as transparent as possible with everything that we've been going through the past two, three weeks and Jensen's appointments. We've been through a lot with our past, especially at the beginning when you're getting thrown into all this stuff. But for some reason, these past two, three weeks have like hit me on another level. And I'm not saying it's like terrible, but I can just feel the effects. I started losing hair again, like postpartum basically. I've been breaking out uncontrollably. I don't even know what's happening. It didn't help that I wasn't sleeping well. I was probably eating a little bit more sugar than I'm used to. I seriously felt like I had like no control over anything. So I don't know why it stressed me out so much. I think it was a combination of Jensen's unknowns, Josh having his procedure, and then me with my work-life balance and not wanting my personal life to affect my work life, which it was. And even though we were able to take care of that really well, so it was still just a stressor to me. Let me go get my hair up because I can't handle it and these little baby hairs from postpartum hair loss are just driving me nuts. I'm gonna prep Jensen's breakfast. I'm gonna get myself some coffee. I'll be right back. So much better, but now we have a crying baby. So let's go take care of that. Hi, Cher. Hi, Cher. Oh, good job. Hey, Vaughn. Hands up, please. Good job, Jensen. Jensen. <laughs> I'm gonna concentrate on feeding him because he doesn't feel well, which I'll explain in a minute, and I'll be right back. Strawberry jello. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Jensen approved? Jello. Oh, you want more? Oh. Try playing. Let's try playing, okay, baby. Some toys down here. You got your bucket. Rain stick. Ugh, can't even get a good setup. Okay, y'all, I'm struggling. Let's kind of start over. I've been struggling, stressed, not sleeping. Josh has been working 10 to 12 hour days, six days a week. You guys, I'm struggling. And now my dogs are just like, oh, what's going on? Let me just get it all in your business as if I'm not already cramped with my setup of a couch cushion trying to get the camera at the right height so you can actually see the main show here and me talk. Anyway, honestly, I kind of lost track of the timeline of everything and catching you guys up with it. The reason why it was so stressful after we had that EEG and the neurologist was calling us when I was at work, and then it left us with so many questions. And we were also then scheduled for another EEG and a neurologist appointment. But it was like I wanted the answers before we had to do another EEG because what was the point of another EEG if we were to not start the seizure medication? And it was just, it was a lot. Luckily I was able to get into the neurologist a week before we were supposed to go do the EEG, which was amazing and great. Thank goodness we did that. Maggie, Maggie off the cushion please. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening, you're a good girl. But before I get into all that, two days ago, Jensen came down with a real bad cold and barely ate that day. And then of course, the next day, we had a pediatrician's appointment for his 15 month pork kiddo, got two shots in both thighs and then blood drawn from his arm. He did pretty good yesterday. He worked through physical therapy pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with what he did. But even this morning, you could tell he just wasn't feeling that great. He got up, I fed him his bottle, and then he passed out on me. My whole day has been like not what I was planning. So let's get into this. Talk about the neurologist and our results and the good news and what we're supposed to look for. Okay, so where to begin? Just a little backstory. They originally were gonna have us start on the seizure medication and then come back in three weeks for an EEG and then to see the neurologist. We had way too many questions to want to start him on the seizure medication. So then we decided to wait to meet in person. I was able to get an appointment about two weeks after his original EEG. We went to his neurology appointment, which you're supposed to get there a half hour early 
basically we waited about two hours for the doctor, but thank goodness that I had a helper and that he was in a fabulous mood because he lost his temper at the end. We had him crawling on the table and he was, for some reason, really wanting to be on the move in that moment. He was a good boy. <laughs> yes, you were. After showing the doctor some video that I had got of his tremors, as well as describing them to her, she came to the conclusion that it's infant gratification behavior and that these tremors are not seizures. Basically that they're getting pleasure down below and it typically will happen in high chairs, which is where we often see it, but kids in diapers, but they also like to maybe grunt during it, get red in the face, pant. Jensen doesn't typically do all those things. Sometimes he grunts and gets red, but we also think he might be trying to poop. So the difference between the tremoring and if it was a seizure, which I had a basic idea of this, but it's still very unsettling when he really gets going. We're just supposed to look for if he's shaking, which it's only a few seconds, so it's hard to test these theories, is to touch him to see if he'll come out of that episode. Picking him up during a tremor, if it continues to happen, that would be more seizure-like activity. If it happens in any scenarios, in his crib, in the high chair, bath time, playtime, if the tremors are happening in those scenarios, that's a little bit more alarming for seizure-like activity as well. The only concerning thing to me is that the type of seizure activity that his EEG showed was focal seizures. And from my understanding, focal seizures happens in one part of the brain, tremoring of arms and legs, but that the person is still aware of their surroundings, which is very much so what his tremors look like because you are very aware in your face, sir, when you do it, but your arms and legs just look like they have no control. At this point, overall good news, we do not have to do seizure medication and that we're just supposed to look for any other advances that look concerning to us and try to capture videos of it. So yay! No seizure medication. Find it. Good job. My biggest takeaway from my experience is if you have any questions at all, if this is just a spasm versus a seizure, please record it and show it to your doctor. Another big difference between the spasms and seizures is if they're starting to regress in learning abilities, because then these seizures can cause developmental delays. So that's just not a risk you wanna wait and take. I just wouldn't recommend, oh, it's nothing. We'll just keep an eye on it and then talk to the doctor. I would highly recommend just be safe and sorry. Get a recording of it if you can. Definitely tell your pediatrician and then they can get you in the right spot because if this was something more serious, which I started to begin to think it was and that I didn't look into it sooner, I just felt like not a great mom. But with all that being said, as far as his EEG results go, I still didn't get a full understanding of it other than knowing that it's just areas in his brain that are firing off these abnormal signals, mostly behind his head, but also on the left side. I have some notes from our neurologist here. What her notes say is instructed mom to try to take video of episodes if they are any different or longer or more intense. And we have a follow up in six months. So he's doing one right now. It's just a lot harder to tell because he's already sitting with his legs straight, but his legs are extending outwardly and you can definitely see his arms doing it, but it's a lot harder to capture those movements when he is already sitting like this. Unlike when he's in the high chair and his legs are dangling down and then all of a sudden he's pushing them out. Oh, and quick side note, I had a couple people reach out to me about the keto diet treating seizures. And I was like, what? Of course, there's always something weird, isn't there? But it was really cool because one of the residents that met with us before we saw the neurologist was talking about the keto diet, which just blew me away. And she said that there's so many different kinds of seizures that it will only really work for this one kind of specific seizure. But we didn't get too much into it since it wasn't gonna be the case for Jensen that it would work for him anyway. And this was before we knew that he wasn't gonna be on seizure medication. But I really appreciated these comments because this is how we keep everyone in the know and what to try and what to look for. But for this specific person, their daughter was put on the keto diet and it worked way better than any anti-seizure medication. The thing that kind of wasn't great was that it was really hard on her stomach. But that they could balance it out with B6 vitamin, I believe. 
B6. But that there are different options out there. So definitely ask around, ask your doctors if you are looking for a different option instead of seizure medication, keto diet, who would have known? The main takeaway from Jensen's EEG results, it was that this EEG was abnormal in wakefulness and sleep due to frequent left occipital spikes, occasional midline frontocentral spikes, and occasional left occipital slowing. The different discharges in the left occipital and midline frontocentral regions indicate at risk of focal seizures. So at risk for those seizures that are occurring in just certain spots of the brain. The occasional left occipital slowing indicates underlying focal cerebral dysfunction. That is the part I forgot to ask about. However, she did mention, you know, the back of the head and just some slowing brain waves. But what does that mean? I don't get it. I'm questioning if we should be getting another EEG in six months as well as meeting with her. I just don't know. I don't know how often these types of things can change or how often you should look into them. If any of you know, let me know. It's already been in the back of my mind because that seizures are part of this disease. Now it's really a little bit more of a constant. Just in this downward spiral these past two weeks of I typically try to be positive but realistic I know I've been saying but um it's like you just don't want to get your hopes up. We went to the zoo. There was like this great space of walking trail and I was like wow this would be such a great area for Jensen to try to use his cane once he's walking but then it's just like I don't really want to think that way. What if he doesn't have the muscle tone eventually and can't walk? I don't want to look forward to something like that if it's never going to happen. And then I was just so upset because we were at the zoo and then I had to rush home to get to his occupational therapy meeting and I was just in this sad me zone of it felt like I was missing out especially with all these other families running around. I ended up crying a little bit that day too because I was like and do not take this out of context but I was like I just want to be a normal mom like I wanted to enjoy the zoo and then maybe have lunch and not have to rush home to Jensen's occupational therapy meeting but I feel good now. I've got sleep the past two days. The hair is what it is and my face. Hopefully this guy is the last bad one there. Love pointing out my flaws on social media. <laughs> I think we're on the up and up. We're just gonna slide back into a normal routine here as normal as it can be with dad dad working a lot. We don't have any big appointments coming up here but for today we're just gonna chill and grandma's making us brunch. He's gonna try some waffles. Do you want to show our new thing we do? Jensen, mommy's turn. <laughs> Jensen's turn. <laughs> You're funny. What, you want to keep doing it? You're going to lick me now? I love that he just did that. It makes my heart so happy. Thanks for bearing with us today and our crummy setup, dirty house, mommy's really beautiful face. We'll see you guys next time. Please continue to like and subscribe. Absolutely love hearing from you guys. It seriously makes me do a little happy little jig every time I see a new notification that someone commented and hearing your own stories and your advice of what you've gone through is just fabulous. It's so wonderful knowing that you're not alone. Special needs families gotta stick together and our special abilities, our superpowers that we all have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we love you so much. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye. Side note Grandma and I are wearing the same thing. I'm the same shoes. <laughs> Mommy's turn? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jensen's turn? <laughs> We're not going to bite, though. <laughs>